book of Exodus, he looked at the children of Israel. It was the sixth month. And God said, because I'm speaking to you now, he said, this month is going to be to you the beginning of months. That means in the midst of the year, God said, what kickstarts a new season? It's not calendar, it's my word. Once I speak, it doesn't matter whether it's November, it can be the beginning of a new year. So that means the believer according to God is not subject to calendar months. So as opposed to calendar, God is a God of times and seasons. Your history is not just going to start in 2023. 2023 is just another latitude God is granting you so that it can extend to you the economy of the grace of God. So, so for the believer, 2023 doesn't exist in isolation. For you to optimize the year 2023, you must Abrahamize. So, so 2023 is not that year where you are having vision perpetually. I mean, you know, plans perpetually, paperwork perpetually, you must land it.
Hallelujah. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with me. Everybody lift up your hand and sing, Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning. Morning by morning. New mercies. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Faithfulness. One more time, great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Come on, great. like you to meditate on the goodness of God in your life. If not for anything at all, the beginning of the new year, beginning of a new era, the beginning of a new dispensation. I want you to bring forth strong words of thanksgiving, strong words of adoration, strong words of praise this morning and just thank God for what he's done, for his good and his mercy endures forever. Come on, I can't feel you have void this morning. Would you lift up your voice and lift up your hands and glorify God this morning and give him praise this morning and give him adoration this morning. Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Let's thank him for choosing us before the foundation of the world to be without blame in his sight and for sealing us with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. Let's sing Zoe as we get into the word of God this morning. Christ, this life that I have is the life of God. And uh, we're just going to do that. But before we do that, look around. Would you welcome somebody to your right and to your left and say you are blessed. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You're blessed. You are blessed. I mean, say it in a definite tone. You are blessed. That this is your year. Hallelujah. This life that, that I have is the life of Christ God. in me. This life that I have is the life of God. This joy that I have is the joy of the Holy Ghost. Are you sure? This life that I have Come on, put your hands together, this everyone. This life that I have is the life of God. So this joy, this joy that I have is the joy of the Holy Ghost. This joy that I have is the joy of God. 
declare. Say 2023 is Zoe. Father, thank you. We give you praise. Thank you for the ministry of the word. And as we teach this morning, everyone is blessed. Everyone is lifted. Everyone is edified. Everyone is strengthened. And everyone is encouraged through the teaching of the word and by the power of the spirit. Thank you for starting us out in 2023 on the strength of your word. For in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. And in him was Zohe. In him was life. In him was life. In him was life. In him was life. Thank you for extending this life unto us. I will give you praise in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a big hand as you take your seat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, uh, Brother Stephen, can you help me to adjust this mic a little? Uh, there's too much bass. I just want it. more of uh, treble. And uh, if you can make it just a bit louder, that will be fine. Matthew chapter number 1, verse number 17. We're just going to key into what we started looking at at the watch night service. And then trust God for utterance this morning to be able to articulate the things of the Spirit in such a coherent manner to prepare us for that which God wants to do in the year 2023. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David unto captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from captivity in Babylon until Christ are 14 generations. At the video, we began to say that what is in verse 17 of Matthew 1 is a summary of the entire year for the believer. That means how do you optimize the grace of God in 2023? You have to establish an equidistance between your being Abrahamic, your being Davidic, what you do in Babylon, and manifestation of Christ. Look at those four things captured for us in Matthew 1, 17. They represent the essence of the summary of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. That means if you are going to manifest Christ in the new year, you start from looking at your Abrahamic side. You have to fully Abrahamize. At some point in the course of the year, you have to be Davidic. In the course of the year, God is going to throw you into a situation that you have to manifest the intelligence of Zion in Babylon. And in the final analysis, what God is working at is Christ in you. The hope of glory. So that means without a very definite Abrahamic side, a very deep Davidic side, and how you also conquer Babylon, you can never manifest Christ. That means the manifestation of Christ is centered around this four equi thing. And, and if you look at the Bible, 14 generations exist between these dimensions. How, I mean, this is where you begin to see the mathematics of God. Look at verse 17 again. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. So if you want to find a guy that was born at the right time, you see David. So, so you could see what God was working out. In the wisdom of God, there will be no king in Israel until the 14th generation after Abraham. So you could see that Israel got the timing right, but it was individual that got wrong. Why was it that out of all the generations between Abraham and David, nobody asked for a king until that 14th generation? That means the people began to press in their spirit and they began to connect with what God was doing in an equidistant fashion because every 14th generation, God was doing something, right? You see that? So that means they, they began to feel we needed a king because, and, and that is exactly what the year 2023 should be to you. What are the things you are picking in your spirit? What, what are the things that, by the reason of what God is doing in your life, that if you can look at your life and you can look at the horizon, you can decode that there are constant. Is that the twin? Well, God bless you. Don't worry, if you are not the twin, that means it's not for you. It's part of the teaching. Paul said, greet Aquila and Priscilla, and was writing a piece. So he greet people, and it's part of the piece. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Do you understand what we're saying? 
So, so if you look at the horizon of your life, what are those things that you can also decode that God is doing every five years, every seven years? That is how you optimize a new year. So in God, there's no, nothing really like a new year. God is not an annual God. God has not, how do I put it now so that I don't confuse somebody? God has not moved from 2023 to 2023. In the realm of God, that doesn't exist. It, that exists in the realm of calendar. Mm. In as much as God has said, let there be light, let them determine time, season, and year, right? That was the lower light. And as a matter of fact, somebody like Joseph, the light that God said should provide guidance to people, the sun, the moon, and 11 stars were bowing to Joseph. So there are people that operate outside of the realm of time. They can bow to you. Amen. So that means for Joseph, what God was saying significantly is that what we are going to begin to do will not make sense in time. Because how can an Israelite go to Egypt to go and become prime minister? That is, that is a kind of socioeconomic expression that time can never, never, never support. So you must operate outside of a time zone. So that means one of the things that must happen to you in 2023 is that time must not harass you. It must bow to you. And the way you get time to bow to you is vision that is clear. And that's why when Jude, Joshua needed to finish a battle. He had to say, son, stand still. So, so there are some people that can command time to extend mm -hmm. a bit to accommodate what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And it will look as if you have more than 24 hours. Indeed, technically, we all have 24 hours. But when you get into the realm of vision, it will look as if you are now operating in 40 hours per day. Because by the reason of the productivity and what you are bringing forth, like, like, like for me now, I mean, I, I, I sat down within how many days now, and I wrote some things that if, if you are to write those things, it might take you a year to write those things. Because when God is extending the economy of time to you and is allowing you to operate outside of that zone, you now begin to see that uh, the sun, the moon, and, and other lights are just still lesser light. There, there is a greater light because God himself is light. And that's why the beginning, the first thing he said was, let there be light. He wasn't referring to sun, moon. He didn't create sun, moon, and all those ones until verse 4. Mm -hmm. So it was another type of light. It's called the light of life. So, so without that light, you cannot even start creating. Somebody say amen. amen. So, so have you looked at your life? Can you tell me if you look at your life? What are those things that you can see that God is doing every two years? Every ten years? Every 15, 15 years. For some people. So, so you see that, I mean, for us now, oh, 2023 is gone. But for God, God is still working in 2023. Because 2022 is like 1982 to God. You understand? So there are certain things God started doing in your life in 1982. He, he extended it in 1992. He extended, or oh, let's use 1983. So that it can make sense to somebody. 1983 extended it a bit in 1993, 10 years after. Extended a bit in 2003, extended a bit in 2013, and 2023 is now the fullness. That is how God operates. He operates in equidistance, you understand? Every 14 generations, every five years, every two years. And if you are not very sensitive, you won't really see that there are some things God is doing in your life every five years. Yes. So how old are you? 40? So every 10 years. Every five years. For some people, it's every two years. Please, can I strike a key for me on the keyboard? There's such an anointing of the Holy Spirit. I'd like everybody to just wave their hands solemnly and just pray in the Spirit. The glory of God has filled the house. That the eyes of understanding will be enlightened to see what God is doing with us, to see what God is doing with us. Is a cracker do not frack a jidaba. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon people now, even in this service. And our God is saying, I'm causing this anointing to come on you to activate the portals of your season. Because 2023 is my season for you, says the Lord. 2023 is that time you have been longing for, you have been waiting for. And the Lord has, is saying, I've come in the fullness of my power. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 
Now let's go back. Now, so all the generations from Abraham to David, 14 generations. And all the generations from David until the captivity in Babylon, surprisingly again, 14 generations. And from Babylon unto Christ, 14 generations. So as God is operating in 1982, God is already operating in 2032. <laughs> in God, there is nothing like you are moving from one year to your God. God operates in a higher realm that is called eternity. So in eternity, the past and the present and the future are all fused together. And that is how God sees things. He doesn't see you now in 2023. He sees you more in terms of what he started doing in 1983. I want to complete in 2023. So that means if you want to find God in the midst of a new year, look at all he's been doing in the midst of the years. A new year is an opportunity for God to revive his work in the midst of the years. Because all those investments of God 10 years ago, 20 years ago, they are not going to waste. They are still part of your story. And they are still part of what God wants to do with you. Look at your neighbor and say, I got that. Mm. Are you sure God? I said, never say, are you sure God? <laughs> so young men like you felt that God is tearing their heart. Samuel, choice. Young people. Psalm 24, Psalm 25. <laughs> <laughs> you know the implication of this is that for all of us, God is giving us an economy of grace that is rare, and we must optimize it. So this is how we begin to optimize it. At the beginning of the year, the first thing God does with you, we dealt with that at the vigil, is to give you a faith project. So the beginning of the dealings of God in the midst of the years is to, is to activate the Abraham in you. It begins with Abraham. So that means, in, how do you know you have started the year? By now, you should have a word that is going to cause you to walk by faith. And the word is going to come in terms of come out of your father's house, out of your country, out of your nation. That means by now you should have a word that is challenging you to leave the known for the unknown. And the moment you're able to do that, the Abraham in you is activated. The year just started. So the year doesn't just start because you said Happy New Year. So some people have not really started 2023. Trust me. As far as the move of God is concerned for them, they are still in 20. 2012. Because that was the last time they, they walked by faith. That was the last time they Abrahamized. <laughs> so the, it's the Abrahamization of things that kickstart a new deal of God for you. So watch those faith instructions that God is giving to you. By now, this year, God, God should have said to you, come out of this one. Come out of that one. Stop that one. You can't do that one again. And it must have been turning you onto a land that I will show you. That means by now it must have been showing you a land so that you can land it. You see, like I said in that video that they played, this is not a year to have so many things written down. This is a year to land those things. There must be a land because land is a factor of production, right? So there must be a land that God is showing you. So, so by now, between now and December, there must be a vision cast. You saw Pastor Wally now sharing with us this morning extensively some of those things that God has said. And how do you know God is the one saying it? Every instruction God is giving to you, it will require faith to carry those things out. So faith at two levels. Number one, you must walk with God. Then number two, you must have a faith project. That means your life is no longer yours in 2023. It's now a platform for God to reveal something bigger than you. That means there's an intention God has concerning 2023 and is looking for an individual to execute it. So this is where your faith work intersects with the purpose of God. Every time God is asking the believer to walk by faith, he's got a bigger purpose than what he's asking that believer to walk by faith for. So, so, so for, for Abraham, he began on believing God to bat Isaac. But on the side of God, he was believing God to father nations. So how about God telling somebody that the reason why you came to the UK is that I made you the father of the UK? Because he started looking at Abraham. He said, you came to me on the basis of the fact that you want a son. 
Just like young men can come to God on the basis of the fact that they want to marry. They can come to God on the basis of the fact that they want to get a job. God knows us. He knows the best way to get us to come to him is to create a situation where we need him. And the moment it gets your attention, he will now tell you why he created that need. He will now tell you that it's more than that job. That that job was just to facilitate you coming to me. So that you can try every other way to get a job and you won't get it. Then you want to come to church. But in coming to church, God just said, I just got your attention. So he said, Abraham, try every other way to have a son, including marrying another girl. It will be Ishmael. It can never be Isaac. Because if you want to bat the Isaac, then you have to come to me. So, so when you now come to me, I will now tell you that the reason why I deliberately withheld Isaac for some time, that you couldn't bat the way other people were batting, is because I made you something bigger. And it is only on this faith lane you can realize what I made you. I have made you a father of many nations. So God said, look at these nations. They are all fatherless. I need somebody in the capacity on the art. Because the way I operate on the art is that somebody must first of all father the dimension. And when somebody is able to father the dimension, then you give me an opportunity to come into that dimension. So father the nations. Because it is in my calendar now that I want to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But I can't do that until there is a father. And the moment you assume the status of that father of nations, you realize that the day I want to go and destroy Sodom, I will have to stop in your house. I will just drop by. So Abraham was minding his business and God just showed up. And God said, you know, I've heard so much about Sodom and Gomorrah. I want to go and destroy them. I mean, with, with what we know about God, shame, God wanted to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He, he, he doesn't need to come down to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He doesn't even need to say it. He should just think it. <laughs> and Sodom is history. But God said, Let's even say he wanted to visit. Out of all the ways to visit Sodom and Gomorrah, what does it take God to drop from heaven and appear in Sodom and Gomorrah? Then he now passed in front of the home of Abraham. And he passed at such a time when Abraham was, it was the heat of the day, so it was very hot. Abraham was, you know, trying to cool down, so sat and got passed. And Abraham knew that was God. And God said, you know, um, I'm God, but... On the faith lane, you have already created a latitude that I, I'm, I'm very comfortable here. And Abraham began to tell God that, look, can I quickly prepare food for you? And in no time, Abraham prepared food and God sat down and God sat eating. Imagine Abraham extended to pit to God. He said, he said, do you enjoy the pork? He said, yeah, this year, <laughs> I mean, the wine is, is not capel. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> and, and they were having a great time. And, and God now said, by the way, I'm, I'm going to go and destroy Sodom. And look at the father of nations. He says, supposing you find 50 righteous people there, will you destroy it? That means your capacity as, as to father a sector for God is that God makes you an intercessor in that sector. And it's got nothing to do with you, but you are the one fathering it. So in 2023, what is it that has got nothing to do with you, but has got everything to do with God, that God is now extending to you so that he bothers you? How do you know you have assumed that status? Something that never bothered you before. Abraham never interceded for any nation. And suddenly, what of if we find 40? What of if we find 30? And he began to negotiate with God. And it was amazing that he was in that same vein without Abraham asking God. Because the moment you become the father of many nations, the lesser is included in the greater. Mm -hmm. The greater is that father something. The lesser is that Isaac will come in another year. Abraham did not need to tell God about Isaac again. It was God that turned back. God just said, where is Sarah? In the same visit. The purpose of that visit was to go and destroy Sodom. But it was that same visit that gave Abraham the promise of Isaac. That means there must be intersection. Somebody say intersection. intersection. So God just said, where is Sarah? And Sarah is in the tent. God said, I'm going to return according to the time of life. Look at God. That means God is saying, I don't use calendar, yeah. but I'll subject it to the time of life because that is what you guys understand. And you embrace his son, and Sarah laughed. Little did Sarah know that it was God that was making her to laugh. Sarah laughed. Just like you are going to laugh this year. Yeah. <laughs> the 
Is sister in red? The sister in red is looking down. Yes, you. You are going to laugh this year. I don't know what is bothering you, but trust me. God brought you here this morning for me to tell you it's your season to laugh. Do you believe that? I know you are troubled about many things, but don't worry. He has overcome the world. Be at peace. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> and God said, why did you say I laugh? Say right in the presence of God, lie to God. He said, I did not laugh. <coughs> but she didn't get the question. She didn't get the fact that God wanted her to laugh. God said, you laughed. But by the time she now batted Isaac, she now understood that it was God that made her to laugh. Because Isaac meant laughter. And you know, the day Isaac was born, he said, God has made me to laugh. And all those who hear will laugh with me. So it was God. It was God. Wow. I'm surprised to have in the house this morning the Lord Mayor of Leicester. <laughs> I mean, um, um, this is so, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> This is the mayor of Leicester. Wow. <laughs> wow. This is, this is a big surprise, sir. You didn't, you didn't tell us you're coming. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> this is very symbolic. First Sunday of the year, the mayor is here. Oh. You see, I can't preach again now. The mayor is here. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. So it was in that same vein. God now made a promise of Isaac. You can imagine. So all that God is looking for this year is intersection. The moment your need and the need of God intersect, then value is born. And that is all he's looking for. And that is why the first thing God is going to do with you and the cause of the new year is to kickstart that Abraham story. You see, the moment you became born again, the first thing God did, or one of the things God did, is to make you a seed of Abraham. So that means within your story, within your DNA, you can act out that Abraham story. So you are the modern day Abraham. You are now the Abraham in Leicester. So, so that means what that is doing also is that it's giving you a predictive framework that your story can be situated within the broad context of the story of Abraham. So if you can meditate on the story of Abraham and look at yourself, you'll now begin to see that all the steps of faith Abraham took, life is also giving an opportunity to repeat those steps. And all the challenges you're having in Leicester, all you just need to ask yourself is that, in the Abraham story, where am I? Okay, now there's a challenge of accommodation. What does that represent in the story of Abraham? And if you now look at the story of Abraham vis-a-vis, -vis, what you are going through today, and you're able to extrapolate spiritual intelligence from Abraham, and now look at you today and say, okay, now this was the step Abraham took in this regard. So as a seed of Abraham, what step do I need to take? So, so that means all that God is looking for is, is for life to begin to assume the status of a framework whereby you are deferring to a higher framework that is based on the intelligence of God and you are subjecting what is happening now to what has happened eternally. So Abraham did not just come. In Romans, Paul talked about the steps of the faith of our father Abraham. That means 2023 is that latitude that God has given every one of us to repeat those steps again. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm a seed of Abraham. Come on, say it as if you mean it. I think you have got the wrong neighbor. Why not look for the right neighbor? And say, neighbor, I'm a seed of Abraham. And I'm going to take the steps of faith. Abraham took. Look at our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the, that is the first thing we see beginning from Matthew. Our Lord Jesus Christ also came as a seed of Abraham. That means all that Jesus did here was to manifest his Abrahamic story. Now, let's, because now I, I, I dealt with Abraham at the watch night service, and I'm looking at it. So, so the next bus stop is David. For, for the purpose of the mayor and those who have just joined us, let me just give a bit of recap. So what we're saying, because I could see uh, 
Some people just come in, including Tessie. No. <laughs> don't worry, Tessie is one of my daughters. She knows herself. Well, your name is not Tessie, don't worry. <laughs> Amen. So what we're saying is that this scripture is representing for us the dealings of God in the course of the year when God is starting you out on a new project, which we believe 2023 significantly is indicating. So that means what God does, I mean, and if you look at the scripture again, all the generations between Abraham and David are 14 generations. God was doing something every 14 generations. So we did say that God is not a God, is not an annual God. So it's very much unlike God that all he's just doing is to abandon 2022 and move into 2023. In between, before 2022, God has been doing something. And if you look at your life very well, in the light of, of, of the word of God and by the intelligence of the spirit, you will see that there are patterns. Just like we're seeing in this story, it took Matty, you know, an accountant, a chartered accountant, to be able to figure that something was happening every 14 generations. And those things did not happen by chance. That, that somehow after Abraham, it took 14 generations for David to emerge. And he also took note that after 14 generations, they were in Babylon. And between Babylon and Christ, again, was another 14 generations. And, and it's now beginning to tell us that this is how the genealogy of Jesus Christ emerges. So that means if Christ is doing something in you, it will follow the same pattern. You just realize that every five years, there's something God is doing with you. Every 10 years, every 15 years. Like for me, it's every five years. I've always notice, and my wife can testify to this, that every five years, God has a way of moving us. So don't be surprised, Pastor Wally, after five years of being in Leicester, if I'm moving. Because every five years, there's always a movement. So, so look at your life. For some people, it's every two years, God is doing something. Then we did say that whenever God wants to do anything significant in your life, the beginning of the story is I will give you an opportunity to re abrahamize and put it up. So you can call it the re abrahamization of things. <laughs> that means it will give you an opportunity to walk by faith. Because outside of faith, you cannot please God. And that is why the first individual to show up in that summary of the generation of Jesus Christ, which is signifying the beginning, the point at which God begins. Is Abraham. So that would be a faith project and a faith walk. So the first one is a walk with me. So God is going to ask you at the beginning of the year to come out of the unknown, uh, unknown and get going to the unknown. How can you tell a 70 year old man to leave his? And you now ask the 70 year old man, he said, Grandpa, where are you going? And he said, I don't know. So get ready for God to take you into the unknown. Because it is in the unknown God can manifest his power. It is in the unknown the capital of faith is fully activated. When you are in a familiar terrain, you are limiting the expression of the faith capital. You are limiting it. The reason why, you see, God brought all of us to the UK at such a time as this is because there's a level of there's a, le there's a depth in God you cannot assess in Nigeria or in Africa. That it, it will take you to come into a land. It will show you. That was why Abraham had to live where he was. Isaac had to stay in Jera. Jacob had to go to Syria. Joseph had to go to Egypt. There's something in this covenant that once you find yourself on a foreign soil, in a, in a foreign terrain, the portals of the covenant, they activated so in 2023, believe God for awesome things in the United Kingdom. Amen. You are not here to just do care and support work. As good as that is. I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But you see, that is not why you are here. That, that is the beginning point. So you are like Joseph. It doesn't matter. You can even stand in the, start in the dungeon. But because you are a seed of Abraham, you cannot stay in the dungeon. Yes, there is something about vision. Oh, that, that God will begin to show you blueprints and frameworks. Imagine Joseph standing before Pharaoh. By the time Joseph stood before Pharaoh, he gave a 14-year blueprint 
And he was able to tell Pharaoh that this is what is going to happen in the next seven years. You see again what we are saying? Every seven, that means Joseph saw a seven-year repetition of a pattern in God. And he knew in seven years there's going to be abundance. And Joseph knew in another seven years, if you don't store the proceeds of this abundance, the famine that is coming will wipe out. You will, not, you will not even know there was an abundance. So that means Joseph, as a seed of Abraham, was able to decode what we are saying. But for Joseph, Joseph saw it in every seven-year pattern. Somebody say amen. amen. So that means in God. For the year 2023, what is going to also give to you is an opportunity to bring in, begin your Abraham story. But at some point, it's not just enough to be Abrahamic. And that's the point I want to quickly emphasize before we close today. The second point is that you have to be Davidic. Yeah. So you can call that the Davidization of things. <laughs> or re-Davidizing. Re, re, re If you read Matthew chapter number one, Christ came as a seed of Abraham and as a seed of David. Yes. So that means these are the two dimensions that make up. So, 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 because you know what we've seen over the years that we've seen so many wonderful people who have walked by faith. Man, now they walk by faith, but they don't have a heart for God. So God is saying, yes, we're going to walk by faith. Yes, I'm going to give you a faith project. And, and let me emphasize the aspect of the faith project. A faith project for you can be something as simple as God is saying, just like we use the aspect of father this nation. God is saying, start taking care of children or go to children's church every Sunday and be buying biscuits for them. It can be as simple as that. See, a faith work without a faith project is not a complete equation. There must be something you are doing for God. There must be a sector you are fathering for God. There must be a commitment that God is saying, you are the one I want you to be fixing this. Just like O.K. Thompson, what we're trying to do here in the African Roundtable program that we have, you see, that is a church here trying to say, let's bring everybody in Leicester together. That's a faith project. And we're also doing that in the academic side. Dr. Oshin is overseeing that. That is a faith project. We're also doing that in the career part. Brother Inca is overseeing that. That is a faith project. But there must also be a personal faith project. So when you see people, they, they stand up and they're like, you know what? So this sister looks at this brother and he says, I'm going to give you 10 pounds every month. And the brother is wondering why. And he's saying, that was what the Lord told me. You see, there must be things like that in your life, that you are not thinking about it. And suddenly, God is now giving it to you as an assignment. Just like Abraham was not thinking about Sodom, and suddenly he started, entry, you know, interceding for Sodom. And that now became his obsession for that season. I already know my faith project for the year. The moment I came back from my retreat in I, I sat my wife down and I shared some of these things with her. And I'm like, these are the things we're going to be doing. These are the categories of people God says we should sort out. So let, let, me, let me say that faith project in a language you can understand. Something that God is saying, sort this out. You are sorting it out on behalf of God. And yet you don't know that that thing is connected to what you have been praying for. Did, would Abraham have known that it is a visit on the account of destroying Sodom that will give him Isaac? For 25 years, he was waiting for Isaac. But the moment God was able to establish him as the father of many nations, because what God has made you is your faith project. That means God is saying, I have made you a succor of many. Yeah. Yeah. Or he looks at you and he says, look, five widows in Nigeria, in the year 2023, sort them out. Mm. Well, that's a faith project. So that means the year just started. And these are widows that you are not even thinking of. And suddenly, you are picking your phone and you're like, send me your account details. And you're sending 5,000, sending 10,000 naira to them every month. And you are doing that consistent. And you don't even know why you are doing it until one day, just like Abraham did not also know. And God now says, this visit to destroy Sodom will also give you an answer to the prayer that you have been praying for 24 years. Because what I'm looking for is intersection. Yeah. Then we move into David. 
Let's quickly do that and close now. Please, can you strike a key on the keyboard? Again, I want you to lift up your hand and just worship the Lord. Because there's so much anointing in the house now. The presence of the Holy Spirit is here. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Now, let's, let's do David and close. Say, I found David a man after my own heart. Look at your neighbor. Say, don't just walk by faith. Don't just do faith project. Have a heart for God. Look at David. For God. I mean, you, you know, when God is talking and he's giving a testimony concerning a man, always pay attention. For God to say, I have found David. That means God was actually looking. And suddenly as God was looking, just like you saw in Chronicles, that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole heart, looking for those whose heart are perfect towards him, so that he can show himself strong in their behalf. That means God was watching. He was looking for a kind of heart. And suddenly he saw David. He was like, what kind of heart is this? And the moment God found David, God said, even after David must have died, we have to retain his seat. He said, that is the only seat that can produce Christ. So how do you know you are Davidizing? Instead of lamenting and mourning about your situation, you are writing Psalms. The fourth indicator that you have transitioned into this zone that is called Davidization of things is that you turn your story into praise. <laughs> and it doesn't matter how overwhelming life is. Nobody here in this room got to the level David got to when it comes to vicissitudes of life and being overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. How can you have a father? A prophet came to town and he said, there's a son, there's a king among your sons. Bring all your sons. And they didn't call David. Oh, you don't understand that level of rejection. That means even Jesse's father it was like, if, if there's going to be a son, it will be among, among these ones. If there's no sons among this one, then there's no son in this house. They left David. But instead of him getting offended about Jesse, the guy was busy writing Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. And so on and so forth. Even if I walk in the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil for that with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You are not in my head with oil. You see why Samuel was carrying the oil at home that has refused to flow? They already said, you have already anointed my head with oil. And my cup runs over. He said, surely, goodness and mercy. Is that your story? Or you are still complaining about rising costs in the UK? Because you cannot be offended and anointed at the same time. So choose the one you want offended or anointed. Imagine David. Oh God. So in 2023, lift up your high praises. Nobody praised God in scripture more than David. In fact, all the songs we are singing now, even in the New Testament, came out of the revelation of David. Tell me, tell me one song we are singing today that is solid, that is not rooted in David. One day he woke up, he said, God, you are my God. Heavenly will I seek thee, as in a dry and a thirsty land where there is no water, to see your power and your glory. One day he woke up, he said, great is the Lord. And we sing it today, great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. We also sing it. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say unto the Lord, did that not the Lord has made? I will rejoice. David. Even tears in exile, David. He said, by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down. And Bonnie Hem had to sing it. By the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down. Yeah, we wept when we remembered Zion. Even secular guys were singing the song of David. Or, or you begin from chapter Psalm 1, blesses the man. 
that does not walk. I mean, look, this guy moved a realm in God. His revelation was too vast for a guy that operated under the old covenant. The guy trusted God absolutely. So that means, let, let, let us not even go into those other realms. Let's start with the basic revelation. Because just like Sister Choi said, please, this year, in order for you to optimize the economy that God is extending to us, go and study Abraham again. This month, you have to study Abraham, you have to study David. Read the entire story of David again and find yourself in that story. So, so the first point was that God was looking. And after God rejected Saul, he went to Samuel. He said, you know what? Fill your horn with oil and go to the house of Jesse. I have found, I provided myself a king among all his sons. So, so that means God is saying also, look, is it, is it not, you think it's by chance. Now, look, I'm not just saying this, dancing to the gallery, but I'm saying it because it is. Why do you think God sent the mayor to come this morning? You think, you think it just came by chance? You have to think again. Because that was the same way God commissioned Samuel. And he said, go to the house of Jesse. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. look, when God is doing something, let's pay attention. And I'm not joking about this. Why, why do we think at such a time as this, God is doing this? And Samuel got to town. The Bible said the elders of the city trembled. And they were like, have you come peaceably? And Samuel said, don't. Because they know that you don't see Samuel like that. Samuel is not the kind of prophet you, that, or, or you don't understand. The elders, when they saw Samuel, they knew something was up. They were trembling. Meanwhile, the young people saw Samuel and saying, high five, man. How are you doing, Sam? <laughs> but the elders knew for Samuel to show up. Yeah. And Samuel said, no, no, we've just come to, to do some operation here, to make some sacrifice here. And they got to the house of Jesus. And the oil refused to flow. Ah. Samuel saw Abinadab. He said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Ah. Shama. All the, ah. He had to look at Jesse. He said, come. Something is missing here. Are these all your sons? <laughs> Jesse now said, well, there is still one. But, but you see that one, we don't understand him. <laughs> because if he comes there now, we start saying, the Lord said unto my Lord. <laughs> I'm like, which Lord is saying to which Lord? And they brought in David. And the Bible says the moment he came, the Bible says he was ruddy, mm-hmm. of a fair countenance. And the Bible says the moment he came, God said, anoint him. But this is it. And the Bible says the Spirit of God came upon him from that day. Now this is it. This is the high point in the life of David. How can you be anointed as king when another king is still on the throne? That means your being Davidic is to understand that you can be anointed but not yet appointed. So it is not every anointing that is going to get you to the throne tomorrow. After David was anointed, it took another 16 years for him to sit on the throne. Saul so reigned for another 16 years. He was anointed. Because you see, David was anointed four times. Yeah. Let me just say that and we'll close. Four times. This was the first time. The second time, he was anointed to reign over the tribe of Judah. The third time, he was anointed to reign over the whole of Israel. So you can count that as the human side of the anointing. So the fourth one, which is the most important one, was that God anointed him. I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil, have I anointed him. As a matter of fact, that last one is actually the first one. If God did not anoint you, no man can anoint you. So, so it was because the anointing of God was already upon David that Samuel showed up, and Samuel anointed. You see, but that anointing of Samuel is not an anointing to reign. It's an anointing to serve. 
So how do you know you are Davidizing? Serve the existing order. Can God anoint you to sit on a throne and you are serving that same throne? Because the next thing you are going to see significantly was that the battle of Goliath showed up. David was anointed. And he was still going home to run errands for his father. Oh, you know, the, for some of us, the moment you get into the palace, <laughs> your heart changes. Emilokon. A popular cliche in Nigeria now. So, imagine David was still at home. David was already serving in the palace. Because how did David get into the palace? Oh, this year. May the anointing of God come upon your creativity. So your being Davidic is also to become creative. You see, that creativity. Because suddenly an evil spirit invaded Saul. And his servant said to him, he said, this evil spirit that is troubling you. Let us get a young man that can play the harp. And they did a national competition. And that is why, you see, what the anointing does is not just to give you to speak in tongues. There's a creative side of the anointing. And you must crave for that. That means in whatever you are doing, you must be the best. When they did a national census of all the guys that could play harp, <laughs> David stood out. If I, that guy said, don't bother yourself. He said, I found a son of David. And look at what they said about David. Give, give out to us. Look at the CV of David. And we we'll begin to close this morning. We'll continue on Sunday. Oh, bless the God. First Chronicles. First Samuel, beg pardon. Chapter what is that? 16. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Mori. And verse number what? Of course, the story is also in Chronicles, so you find in First Chronicles and First Samuel. 16, verse number what, please? Fast, fast, fast. Somebody find, okay, Thompson, find verse for me, please. Verse what? 14. 16, 14. Please can you give us on the screen as we begin to... No, 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 let them, let them give it to us from 14 so that we can read. Okay, because of time. Okay, now let's read. Everyone read. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and a distressing spirit from the Lord. So that means, how do you know it's time to manifest your David dimension? There will be distress in the land. A distressing spirit. And if you look at the United Kingdom and the world, almost all the world, people are going through economic recession. There's distress. This is an opportunity for the David in you to manifest. Look, look at it. Move on. And so servant said to him, let's read, surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Let our master now command your servant who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the earth. Stop. What does it mean to be David? You must know what your harp is in 2023 and be skillful on it. That's right. What is your harp? You must harp your harp. <laughs> Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. In 2023, I'm going to harp my harp. So ask your neighbor, say, what's your harp? So what, what is that instrument that God has given you? And look at a skillful player. And it shall be, he will play it with his hand when the distressing spirit from God is upon you. That means one of the greatest ways to stop stress at national level is for you to be very skillful. Yes, sir. You can control what is happening on, at that 10 Downey Street by the skill that God has given to you. That's what that scripture is saying. Yeah. Even the servant of Saul knew that the answer to this your stress is not, is not seeking any expert. It's to find a guy who can play well. Yeah. Um, move on. Next verse. So Saul said to his I'm a provider a man who can play well and bring him to me. Now, verse 18. In 2023, I prophesy upon you that this is how you are going to come highly recommended. Yeah. Look at what he said. One of the servants answered and said, look, 
I have seen, he said, don't even bother looking. I've seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite. Who is what? Number one, Davidization. Number two, mighty man, mighty man of valor. Number three, man of number four, this is not a year that you talk carelessly. You must be prudent in speech. Number four, oh God. Sisters, move on. And the Lord is with him. For every single sister in the house, God just gave you the CV of the kind of man you can marry. Did you, did you just see your husband now? No, the same goes. Moriah, did you see your husband? <laughs> Moriah was shocked. Where's Toke? Why she? Did you see your husband? <laughs> can you see your husband in that picture? Look at it. Let's read again. <laughs> Verse 18. I've seen a son of Jesus. Who is what? Say in the name of Jesus. In 2023, I'm going to be skillful in playing. So this year is not just looking for people who can play. It's looking for people who are skillful. Say in the name of Jesus. I'm a mighty man of valor. Say in the name of Jesus, I'm a man of war. Say in the name of Jesus, I'm prudent in speech. Say in the name of Jesus, I am handsome. <laughs> I'm beautiful for the ladies. So, so, so that means it's not here that you dress anyhow. That your beard is full and you, you are not trimming it. You have to look it. You have to be handsome. That means even though David was a poor guy, but you, you will see that that guy, for, for somebody to say, he's handsome. Even if it's two shirts you have, wear them in such a way that people think you have ten. You can ask my wife, when I used to have two shirts, two trousers, you would think I had a wardrobe because I, I wear it with dignity and with honor. Even till now, you see, people think I, I wear expensive things. You can ask my wife. Everything I buy and I wear, they are simple things. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't use it. Like this one I'm wearing now, if I tell you it was my tailor in Lagos, I made it. And it's not even from the UK. But you see, but, but, but once the grace of God is upon you, once you wear it, people will think you went to wear. Arrods to buy. I said, pastors' shops in Arrods. Hmm. And the most important thing, and the Lord is with him. That was how David got to the palace. And in 2023, I prophesy that the palace is your destination in the name of Jesus. I want us to begin to pray and take this word to heart. This is the word of the Lord. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for the ministry of the word. And thank you for the impartation. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. We have um, one or two things to do before we close. Um, we're still right on time. The first thing we're going to do is uh, let's give our offerings to uh, the Lord this morning. Tithe and offering. The account is on the screen. Let's just take a minute to do that. Um, so if you want to give, please go ahead. And um, just do that. Um, and if you want to do cash, we have um, some envelopes. If you are doing cash, just wave your hand. Uh, the ushers are going to get across to you to give you some envelopes. There's a hand there, the guy in uh, shades. All right. What's your name, brother? Gideon. Gideon. God bless you, Gideon. All right. The rest of us can just do transfer. And if you, you are not under pressure, please, at the Envoy Nation, we don't put people under pressure to give. You can take the screenshot, and as you are led later in the day, tomorrow, you can, you can give. Hallelujah. So it's also communion service, so we're just going to get into communion now. Please, all, the officers, can you help us to extend the elements to everybody as we partake of the Lord's table this morning? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? So, blessing blood of the Lamb are your garments, Doctor Jamilu. Are the one the snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Mm, this is my body broken for you. And as you hit me, remember me. This is my blood. This is my blood. Pour out for you. And as you drink me, remember you. By your blood, by your blood, principalities. Jesus, Jesus, come on, your mics, Jesus, Jesus. by your Lord, by your word, you establish authority, Jesus, 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 the right, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, come and say Jesus, oh Jesus, oh the blood of Jesus, oh the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Amen. Shall we all rise, please? Is everyone with the element now? You have your bread and you have your wine. Please give me Genesis. 14 chapter number 18 on the screen. Okay, please. Um, okay, Pastor Wale wants to explain to us how to open. Yeah, just in case there are people here who doesn't know how to open the, the communion material, you need to, there's a lid. You need to press it down first, then to, to take the bread, you peel the upper part, then uh, to take the wine, you peel the whole, whole lid. That's how to do it. I'm just, I'm just conscious of people. If you don't know how to do it, ask your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> and if your neighbor doesn't know, ask another neighbor until you find the right neighbor. Amen. Genesis 14, 18, then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God, most high, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the most high God who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a title of all. This was the first time in scripture where communion was served. And because Christ came as a priest after the order of Melchizedek, he had to repeat this also at the end of his life. But I've said that same night in which the Lord was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it. And he gave it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. And as part of his death wish, or more importantly, his life wish, he said, do this in remembrance of me. And Apostle Paul wrote that for as long as you eat this bread, you do show forth the lost dead until he comes. 
This is one of the greatest ordinances of Christianity. And the Lord himself requested that this must be done in his remembrance. So we are remembering him as a seed of a David. We are remembering him as a seed of Abraham. And we are remembering him as the one who has given us a latitude called 2023 because it is the year of our Lord. 2023, AD 2023. Can you take the bread in the name of Jesus? The Bible says, in the same vein, he took up and he gave thanks. And he said, this is the New Testament in my blood. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. And Apostle Paul also wrote to testify that the cup of the blessing, the cup of the communion is actually a cup of blessing that we receive. And as we do this, we're establishing the fact that he shed his blood for you. Yours will not be spilled. That this year, the blood will speak for you. The blood will speak better things than the blood of Abel in the name of Jesus. Can we take? Can you be seated? He is Lord. He is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Before I just uh, greet the house. We have two more things to do. We want to celebrate one of our beloved sisters and leaders in the house whose birthday is today. Happy birthday. We are saying we love you. God be with you to the end of time. Choir, come on. May say, well done. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Sister Lero. We are saying we love you. God be with you to the end of time. May he say. I guess we have a K for up. We are saying we love you till the end of time. Quickly, please. Amen. Hallelujah. On behalf of, hold on, on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church and the savior of the body, we want to say happy birthday. Sister Alero is a rare gift to Envoy Nation. From the first day she stepped into this house, from the first day, she started making a difference. You know, there are some people that come, they take their time, they feel the environment, and they want to be sure, okay, what can I do here? And they dilly a bit. But that's not Sister Alero. From the first day, she came in. And we knew she came in from the first day. We were still at... Uh, St. Martin's house then at Leicester Cathedral, that's what we were using for service. And she came in. I remember that day, how it happened was that she came in. We didn't have a complete choir. She just came in and she went straight to the front, picked the mic, and started singing with the choir. And I had to ask, who is that person with the choir? From the word go, she, she just made, and, and we just honor you this morning. Thank God for you. Shall we give her a big hand, please? And... Um, at Empire Nation, we have the marginal capacity to celebrate people. And we celebrate what God is doing. And we celebrate your husband also, who is also here with us. Please, would you please join your wife, sir? What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. You know, guys, she's not in the choir now. <laughs> All right. You know, you know, God gave you a special wife. I mean, this is a woman of God. There's just something about her. She's, I call her my wife's covenant sister. 
because he's always coming to see my wife and they, they have their paroles. And I don't know what they're always talking about. <laughs> thank, thank you, Sister Alera. So, so with, with Pastor Wale, what, what's going to happen? I mean, all right, they call the cake. Pastor Murray, the children, please, would you also join them? The twins. Uh, congratulations once again, uh, Director Alero. She is, like Pastor Lee have said, such an amazing person. She has a great personality. She's a sweetheart, you know, and I think God just has a way of just endearing people to me in very unique ways. Uh, Alero is very selfless. You know, she's not just the director in charge of the children's church because, you know, she was she passionately loves the children. And I'm sure they've done some presentation for you. You know, you know, she's she's particular about every child, you know, and she prayerfully prays for them. I mean, she carries them in her heart. And and she's a very prophetic woman as well. I can say that, you know, and I know that Oga, you're blessed to have her. I know you know that already anyway. And she is also a great mother. She's raised amazing children, amazing, gifted, respectable children. I mean, very respectful children. Jasper is my, is my son. I call him happy boy, happy child. He's always so happy and smiling. And the entire family is a gift to the Envoy Nation. And we're super glad to have them, you know, with us. Thank you so much, Alero. I love you. I know you know that already. <laughs> And we love you. Can we all stand and just, you know, sing happy birthday for her and then she can cut the cake. Let's just sing happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless 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 you. Hip, hip, hip. Hooray! God bless you. We love you. Congratulations. Our congratulations. Thank you. Amen. Be seated, please. And the last thing we're doing today is to welcome the first time as if today's your first time at the Envoy Nation. You've never been here, it's your first time today. Can you just wave your hand? <laughs> Apart from the mayor, while you are waving, could you just stand up, please? As we welcome you, just stand. Today's your first time. Wow. Let's greet them, those who are coming for the first time. I've never seen, I've never seen, oh, wonder, 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 wonder. wonder. I've never, never seen, seen, I've never seen, oh, wonder, wonder. We're talking God for the first time. Jesus, now I Jesus, now I Jesus, now I Jesus, now I I've never seen, I've never seen, wonder, 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 wonder. Amen. That is to welcome the first timers. We're just thanking God for you. And uh, this is the Envoy Nation. Our anointing and our commission is to teach the Word of God with true dedication and devotion, such as we have done this morning. So, on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome you to Envoy Nation. And if you don't have a church in Leicester that you are committed to, please, we'd like you to try Envoy Nation just as you have done this morning knowing fully well that God has a plan for you. And this is just the beginning of the year. We have so much we're doing this year. And to the glory of God, we are also in transition because we are trying to move out of here into a more comfortable place where we can have multiple services. And once we move, we're going to be having three services every Sunday so as to accommodate those who cannot come for a morning service like this. So there will be an 11 o'clock, there will be a 1 o'clock, and there will be a 5 o'clock. So that those who work on Saturday can also come and still have an opportunity to, to have a service 5 p.m. on Sunday. 
So we welcome you. Please help us to fill the form. I think they've given you the form. And uh, please, and after service, we'd like you to come. And come and um, we'll meet you. My wife and I would like to meet you and give you a handshake and give you a hug and just celebrate and thank God for you. So to close us this morning, we have the privilege of having a political leader of this city in church this morning. Um, I don't know why the mayor decided to come this morning, but I just want to believe that someone of his caliber cannot just come by without us giving him an opportunity to uh, say something to us this morning. We do welcome this morning the Lord Mayor of Leicester to just greet the house or say something to the house. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I guess the, the first thing to say is good afternoon. I, I'm sure we can do a bit better than that. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. It's, it's important that we remember what the pastor says, that sometimes we do things and we're not driven by our own causes to do it, but by some other forces. And I said to the Lady Marius yesterday, and I suppose I need to clarify the fact that I am not a churchgoer. I only go to church weddings, christenings, and funerals. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean I don't believe that there is a God. I, I do recognize that God's existence in my life when I look beyond myself in all the things that I see. I, however, do have a bit of a problem in trying to separate what I feel and see and place it into a particular denomination largely because of historic reasons. And I don't think I need to go into those. But for some unknown reason yesterday, I had this great urge to come to wow. this church. <laughs> the Lady Marys would have been with me, but she is recovering from an operation. But she does ask me to pass on her good wishes and blessings. Now, she is a churchgoer. <laughs> and it's my expectation that you will see her here at least once. <laughs> and it will be up to you then to persuade her. <laughs> but of course, I will pass on the sense of family. That is the first thing that I picked up as I came in. I am, and, and you will say, oh, you're entitled to say that because you're in the church. But I can also say, I, I don't have to say this because I have free will not to say it. But I do choose to say it. This is the second time I'm meeting the pastor. And there's a certain kind of warmth, camaraderie, godliness about him, which I find very magnetic. Oh and I'd like to think that's, that's emanating from him because of his belief in God and the, the words of the Bible, because he certainly delivered it with an authority that is not often delivered by preachers, pastors that I've seen for many a year. So I, I do congratulate you on having a pastor who is a true believer and he doesn't demand that you do this or do that, but do listen to the voice that's speaking to you from the inside. 
And I think that's really very, very important. Now, I have to say this. The first time I met the pastor was at the East Midlands African Business Fair. And I was surprised by something he said to me. He said, I know you from somewhere. And I'm thinking, well, I've never seen you before in my entire life. So how, how come do you know me? And he said, you're that person that I see on Abbey Park in the morning, going around, walking briskly around the park. And I'm thinking, well, I do do that. But how would you have seen me? <laughs> and he says, he also go to the park some mornings uh, for a brisk walk. And I think to myself, isn't life strange? You know they say that no man is an island, and they say the world is a small place. I just felt the truth of that when you made that comment. There was one bit that I didn't quite like, which I must also say. He said he saw this old man walking very fast. <laughs> And, and he hoped that when he gets that old, he'll be able to walk that fast as well. <laughs> but what my wife does say to me all the time, she says, age is just a number. Yes. It's really about what's in your heart and how you share that humanity that we all have in a godly way with each of our fellow human beings. And there's nothing that gives me the greatest of joy than to see, and I'm going to say it like I see it, a collection of black people together feeling good about themselves, wanting to rejoice about who they are, and understanding that they're in a space that might be dominated by another race or another nation but they're confident in who we are and what it is that we're about. And whilst it is the case that I am the first black Lord Mayor of African heritage in the city, and I shared it before, the first Lord Mayor was 1251, so it's taken me 771 years what I say each time is that this isn't about me, this is about all of us. Yes, it's about those who came here and fought against the racism, fought against the difficulties that they experienced in order to make sure that they plant a seed that generation after them would claim ownership of this place and go on to do great things. Amen. But never forgetting that our home is Africa Amen. and we have a duty to help lift Africa out of the difficulty <laughs> and the difficult place it is in at the moment. And we can do that yeah. if we believe and strive for it. And I did also say to the pastor, never give a politician a mic because he never knows when to shut up. <laughs> So thank you very much for listening to me. And it's been my pleasure and honor to follow that spirit yesterday and to be with you this morning. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Wow. You know, maybe some of us here don't know where mayor is. When you get on, go and Google it. The Lord mayor. <laughs> so this is like the governor visiting us. And um, this is the highest political leader office in Leicester here. And graciously, uh, I mean, I remember that day we met, we just spoke briefly about the church. And he said, I'll, I'll, I'll come around one of the days. And I didn't know that it would be this soon. <laughs> and thank you very much, sir. And please extend our love to the mayoress. And that we love her too. And we're looking forward to our visit also one of these days. 
And uh, shall we rise as we close the meeting? Um, well, okay, our confession, okay, <laughs> please. Yes, okay. So um, moving on this year, we're going to be closing with our confession. And this captures the totality of our vision statement here at the Envoy Nation. So I want you to please read with me. I am a believer who is in full identification with the provisions of the Father, the finished works of Christ, and the present ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I use this identification to influence peoples, nations, institutions, and systems. I am an envoy with a commission. Happy New Year, everyone, once again. Have a blessed week. Have a prosperous week. And I will see you next week, Sunday. Don't forget, we have our workers' meeting and our family meeting next week, Sunday. First timers, please come to my left. Would love to receive you properly. God bless you. Have a beautiful, beautiful week ahead. And all the best to all the students submitting assessments and doing exams. The grace of God is evident over you, and the favor of God will separate you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Men's fellowship list at the back. Men, all the men, single, married, complicated, divorced, whatever it is, please. All the men.